بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah the Lord, Cherisher and Sustainer of the Worlds the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful, the Master of the Day of Judgment All praise is due to Allah and Allah's peace and blessings be upon His last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His pure family, His loyal companions and all those who follow them with righteousness and good deeds until the Day of Judgment, Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. In the Holy Quran, in four places, Allah Almighty mentions that He will give the reward to specific groups and He will increase them from His favor and blessing. He will increase them in rewards and blessings. Now, anyone who is serious about his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about the hereafter should concentrate. What are the things that will entitle you to an increase in reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And there are many. We can summarize the most important one of them. The first thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it in general, which is basically to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do good deeds. That is a generalization. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as for those who believe and do righteous deeds, Allah Almighty will give them their reward and increase them from his favor. And the other one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds more details to that, which is they heroically obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They respond to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The concept of responding to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you to do, you do it. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you not to do, you abstain from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Holy Quran again. And those who believe respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who believe and do righteous deeds respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Almighty give them their rewards in full and increase them from his favor. The third and the fourth, in these places, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned many different criteria altogether of those who deserve an increase. And we'll speak them about, about them with a little more detail. The first one is those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this when he spoke about the masjid, place of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, in houses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded or legalized to be built and erected that is for his worship that is masjid these are the houses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed you to erect or build for his worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed that it is be built or established and his name is mentioned in it that is the criteria of the masjid it means what is the reason why do you build this place to mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah Almighty says about now this these people Glorifies him in, in it, day and night, men. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe who these people are. So we get the first criteria. Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night in the masjid. This one is mentioned where? In the masjid. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This is a specific type of dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about these men لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله Neither trade nor sale will divert them from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Take them away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Means the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their main trade Main goal, main priority They are not diverted by this and here, now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mentioned establishing the salah. Neither trade nor sale will divert them from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and establishing the salah and giving the zakah. Now, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these criteria, He mentioned one other aspect of them. They fear a day that is the hereafter, judgment day. They fear a day in which the hearts and the eyes will turn over. When somebody is worried, he does not feel tranquil. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that they are afraid from the hereafter. Then Allah Almighty mentioned what will happen to them. So that they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they establish the salah, they give the zakah, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them their reward in full and increase them from his favor. And the increase in here, there is another criteria that is mentioned after this. This increase, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said after that, Wallahu yarzuqu man yasha'u bighayri hisab. And Allah Almighty gives rizq to anyone who wishes without any accountability. So for them it's something extra. Now we need to specify just a few things very quickly. First, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something that is, this is the biggest and most important ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be at all your times. Time of peace, time of war, time of ease, time of difficulties, time of bliss from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, times of trials and tribulation, times of uh, fear, time of happiness, time of sadness, at all times. When sleeping, when waking up, when walking, when bathing, when going to the bathroom, getting out of the bathroom, taking a bath, cleaning, dressing up, going to the masjid, at all times. There are remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned at all times. And you need to pay attention to the remembrance so that Allah will write you among those who remember Him every day. This person was among those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot, so that you will deserve that. The second thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about here when He says, Yusabbihu lahu, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the masjid. What is the meaning of it? Does it mean only the remembrance and glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or does it mean the salah because he said in the masjid? Both of them are valid. If you say he means the salah, it is valid. And if you say it means the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's still valid. Probably the correct understanding is both of them. Both of them together in the masjid. Because in the second ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says they are not diverted, from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and establishing the salah. In the first he said only glorify Allah. But in the second one he says they are not diverted from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and salah. So most probably the meaning is both of them together. Now the second thing after this that is mentioned regarding the salah, it is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most important direct ibadah, worship ibadah by the body and soul together is the salah. Among all practical ibadah in Islam, this is the foremost important one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Holy Quran, hafidhu ala salawai, pay attention to the salah and protect it. And the Messenger of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the last advice of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before he passed on from this world to the next world, he said, as salah, as salah, means pay attention to the salah and establish it. He repeated that twice. The last thing that the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised this nation before he passed on from this world. Furthermore, the Salah expiates the sins between it and the other Salah. Every Salah like that and every five Salah similar to the other one. And also the Salah is a bliss all over from the beginning till the end. The moment you start the Wudu, the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam performed Wudu in a good way. And he said anyone who performs such good Wudu then all his previous sins will be forgiven and from the last wudu till this wudu and then his walking to the masjid and his salah will be considered extra for him subhanallah in the other hadith the messenger muhammad sallam mentioned about the importance of praying in the masjid in the masjid the messenger sallam said anyone who performs wudu at his home he does not leave the house except with wudu and then he goes to the masjid to pray, the obligatory salah. Then every step that he takes, one step will elevate him one grade in paradise, and one step will expiate one sin of his. Each step, one single step will give you this, and the other will give you that. Imagine, that is just by doing this simple thing. And furthermore, this is the, 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 the contract between Allah, you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a Muslim. Ibn Mas'ud said, anyone who wishes to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter as a Muslim should pay attention to his salah. The messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was guided to the straight path, the right ways of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these, praying these, where they are called for, where they are called for, means in the masjid. Paying attention to that, where they are called for, is part of the 
straight path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed to the messenger. The second thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned after the salah is giving the zakah. And giving the zakah, this is an important point that we need to pay attention to. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses whosoever, gives people some more money and give people less money. And so with the rest of the properties and belonging. And it is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to both of them. A test for those who were blessed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by extra property and money and, it's, and health and knowledge and so on, that they will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that and they will do good with it for themselves and the others and they will help those who are less privileged, those who do not have. Are you going to do that or not? And the second thing are those who do not have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, test them whether they will be patient or not and whether they will seek halal and permissible way of gaining wealth or whether they will take wrong ways. And thus it is a test for both of them. Now the second part after that is remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised many things for those who give, those who support the other, those who help the poor and needy. The first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned is that He will multiply their rewards. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the example like a single seed that plants and gives 700 seeds. So the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you give and help will be multiplied 700 times or more. Imagine giving 1,000 for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help a poor or needy or something. And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is mentioned 700,000. You have given 700,000 as charity and maybe more. So that is how important it is, even giving one dirham or two dirham and so on, whatever you can. The second thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that anyone who gives anything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Almighty will compensate, it, compensate him for it in this world before the hereafter. Whatever you spend, whatever you spend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace it for you, as Allah mentioned in the Holy Quran. And he is the best of providers, the best who give risk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the second. The third one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you with the rest of your wealth and property and with your health and your family and your time and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless the rest for you. So that is how important it is for a person to pay attention to this ibadah. Last but not least, another one that is mentioned in another verse and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with it before the salah and before the zakah to show, to show its importance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily those who recite the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and establish the salah and give the zakah. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with what? Recitation of the Holy Quran. And they wish for a trade with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will never lose. That is the trait that you are dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a trait between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do something, you give something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you more. It's a trade, but this is a win-win all the time. It's never going to fail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that Allah Almighty will give them their reward in full and increase him from his favor. Increase them from his favor. Now the recitation of the Holy Quran, we'll conclude with that inshallah. Recitation of the Holy Quran is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Utlu ma uhiya alaykum al kitab. Recite what was revealed to you from your Lord, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the book. It was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what? At least read it. When you receive a message, what to do? First thing, open it and read it, right? You receive an email, very important email, from your employer, or from your boss, or from your beloved one, or from anyone. The first thing you do is receive it, right? Read it. This is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. First step is to read it. You will get reward for that. For each letter, you will get 10 rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each single letter, not each verse. Each letter as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned. Second thing which was much more important which is to understand it. Ponder over the meanings of it. As Allah mentioned in the Holy Quran, this is a blessed book that we reveal to you, to people so that they will understand it. So that they will remember. You get a message and you read it without understanding and you say, okay, well done. That's it. You didn't understand what is in it. Does it work? You have to understand what the message is there. That is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a message, you have to understand it. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want? Simple, wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh, you who believe, it means you, me, everybody. 
Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do, that is what you should do. Don't, and that is what you avoid. Simple. You can judge yourself by the Holy Quran. Second thing after that, which is to practice what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. To implement the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your life. And after that, it's important also to, recite, to, to memorize it. Memorizing the Holy Quran is one of the greatest rewards. Merely reading the Holy Quran is something important. Knowing about it is something more important. The Messenger of Allah mentioned these two, that they are best and better than the whole world, than any type of rizq or reward or property that you might get. The Messenger of Allah said, why wouldn't one of you go to the masjid so that he will learn knowledge? Or recite two verses from the Holy Quran. It will be better to him than two very important and very expensive camels, like two important two cars in your time. Two verses, just recite two verses. The Messenger of Allah said, this is better than two cars. And three are better than three, and four are better than four. And any number are better than their similar number in any worldly matters, subhanAllah. Now, memorizing it is an even higher position. The one who memorizes the Holy Quran, the reward is not only in this world, but also in the hereafter. The Messenger وسلم, said, the one who memorizes the Holy Quran, it will be said to him in the hereafter, recite and rise. For every single verse from the Holy Quran that you recite, you will be raised one degree in paradise, one level in paradise. It will be said to him, your position in paradise is wherever you stop recitation, with the last verse that you recite. How many memorize? And that is where your level will be. That is the importance of the Holy Quran. As Ibn Mas'ud said, the Holy Quran is the banquet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So come over and take your share from the banquet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the banquet. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting you. Somebody is inviting you. This is, this is your share. Take your share. How much you want, it's up to you. You want to take one verse or the full? You are free to do that. If somebody invites you to a banquet, you cannot take everything, right? You have to leave something for the rest. So you take your share and stop. The Holy Quran is not like that. Take your share as much as you can. If you take it all, that is, will be the greatest bliss. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who sincerely believe in Him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who do righteous deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are muhsineen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who establish the salah, those who pay the zakah, those who recite the Holy Quran often and often, and those who do righteous deeds to themselves and everyone around them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to His divine truth, make us good for ourselves and everyone around us. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا نعم